Yo, my peoples, my name is CJ. Welcome back to our nation with a new episode. My guy, Realist Rizzy, what are you saying? Yeah, brother, brother. Yes, yes, uh, tell us about your background, who you are, why you started rapping, like a brief, yeah. you know, description of how it all started, bro. So obviously, like, Realist Rizzy, you know, originated in South, grew up in South. You know, my whole aura is South, bro. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Because yeah. I'm Literally. original to where I'm from, so when it comes up to, like, where man grew, Mm. Everything, bro. Like, I've been doing music since I was seven. Is it? You get me? So it's like my lyrical content, everything, all of my surroundings, it all had like an impact on that. Mm. So yeah, man, that's who I am. Obviously, as I started growing, people are like, raw, man, like, everything, everything you're saying is real. Mm. You get me, like. It sounds meant to be, though, man. Realist. Yeah. You get me? Even it's in my amazing. music, you can hear real shit. Um, it's proud, man. It's yeah. proud, man. So, like, what was your first introduction to hip hop? And how did it influence you? It was all from, like, my brother, realistically. Mm. I used to hear my man in the kitchen listening to Tupac. So, uh, yeah. This is sounding all right, you know? Like, then it kind of switched it to Nas, DMX, Mob Deep, all okay. of that. It had an influence on me. I'm like, right, I'm hearing other types of music. So, when I was growing up, obviously, Rick Ross and that was about. Mm. I'm like, listen, there's obviously two different sides to this music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the old school hip-hop resonated with me heavy. Because yeah. I'm like, listen, like, the beat, the flow patterns, everything that they're saying, it's like, on my level, like, obviously, man grew up in the struggle, you get me? Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. when you hear more conscious rap, you're thinking of Tupac, you're thinking of Nas. So, I kind of implemented that into my style. And, yeah, man, I went from there, really. Yeah, yeah, it's part, man. Even on your recent freestyles as well, like, mm. you was freestyling on Nasby, actually. Mm. Um... I can't remember what it's called. Ifa. Ifa, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was when he was dissing Jay-Z, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a whole other era. Mm. But talking about the 90s, man, because I know you mentioned Tupac mm. and people like DMX, etc. Yeah. Who do you think is the best, in your opinion, in the 90s era? I'm biased, isn't it? So, okay. you see the whole Tupac and Biggie thing? Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, Tupac. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. he's conscious. You know. Biggie's more on the party vibe. I fuck with it. He's yeah. got enough bangers. But Tupac always resonated with me. Yeah, man. Get me, car. Yeah. Even listen, listening to certain things, I'm like, rah, I can relate to that, bro. Mm. Man can't really relate to party and bullshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't really relate to all of them type of things there because I'm not living that right now. But mm. it's like growing up in the struggle, it's like, rah, you know what? Tupac's saying certain things that I can relate to. Mm. So I kind of wanted to, you know, show that in my music style as well. That's no, calm, bro, man. That's calm, bro. Let's say the two thousands as well because yeah. I know there's like, People at 50 Cent. Mm. Um, ja Rule was more 90s, but even he made some hits as well. Mm. But who would you say in the 2000 era, like early 2000 era? Early 2000s? Was like, we're talking the States now. Yeah, yeah States. Oh, it's a tough one. I know, bro. It's a tough one. It's a lot of 50 did stuff. hold his ground. For a long he time. He did hold his ground for a long, long time. But I feel like yeah, man, fifty still realistically. Mm. DMX was still doing this thing in the early two thousands, though. Correct. Mm. So, with DMX, if you listen to him as he started to like, obviously the early two thousands, like he remained the same. Mm. So that's the type of artist that I like. I like people that can remain the same. Yeah. You're still getting the same type of like audience. People are still listening to you, taking you in. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you always got to put respect on his name as well. That's cool, man. That's cool, man. Was there a specific moment or event that made you realise you wanted to become a rapper? Yeah, like, obviously, I started going to studio. I was going to studio from the ages of six, seven. Yeah. I started off producing. Okay. You know, just a little, the little thing. My brother, he's a producer, isn't it? Okay. So I was like, yeah, you know what? Let me try a little thing. I don't know if you lot know about Reason and all of them type of product, like, the, um, softwares and that. No, so, no, no. Yeah, all, all, like, you get me, fam. So man's doing all of that. And then I was like, yeah, fam, like, Obviously, I feel like I can, I can kind of spit. You get me? I'm reading through the dictionary, looking at all the words, okay. understanding certain things. So I'm like, how can I put this into man's raps? And only at a certain age where I started to understand myself as an artist a bit more, mm. I started going to the studio, okay. like properly booking time and, you know, and I'm like, oh, I ain't hearing this nowhere else. <laughs> you get me? I'm not, I'm not trying to sound biased and that. Like there's a lot of artists out there, you know, their lyrical content is good put my hands up but when I'm listening to certain shit that man's saying other people are hearing shit like people that's around me mm. they're like rah bro like you need to you need to take this somewhere else you know car. I just got music on my phone these times Rah. so it's like I'm holding back my own 
you know, I could be blowing up, but I'm holding myself back. Mm. It's like I'm my worst critic. <clears throat> Do you know what I mean? So Makes instead sense. of me releasing something, I'll be like, nah, you know what? There's better music out there. Let me not. Yeah. I got to a stage where I'm like, no, nah, man, I've got too much in the inventory to just hold it back. I need yeah. to kind of show the people the more I've No, it makes sense. A lot of artists like to hold the music in the vault, you know? Yeah. Um, like I said this before on some other podcasts and other, other episodes on my podcast, like, yeah. um, even like the Migos as well, like, yeah. you know, you know, they're strong, uh, like, you know, their song straightening. Yeah. Yeah. Like all them other commercial songs, they don't like it, but it blew it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So if they held that back, That's they the wouldn't thing. be where they would, um, where they would be today. Yeah. You understand? Mm. So mm. yeah, bro, like, all them artists out there, all you artists out there, or whatever you do, just put the stuff out, man. Let the people decide, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let the people decide, man, because they're your audience at the end of the day, you see me? So, 100%. Mm. But now we're going to go into, like, the creative process of the question. So, mm. can you walk us through cre- a creative process when writing a new song or album? Oh, uh, you know what? It comes to me naturally. Oh, I'm so not going to sit and... down, I'm not going to go on YouTube and say, you know what, here's a beat. Yeah. Let me just try and find my word in nah, It will come to me naturally. Okay. Say I'm walking down the road or I'm driving. I'll be like, you know what? I'm thinking of a certain set of words right now. Mm. Let me find a specific beat that will actually match my flow. Mm. I go down. Once I've got them first four bars, the rest of it is like, it's, it's, it's just nature, bro. Say it's like I'm sitting down and God's using me as a vessel to write. 100%. And I just write, bro. And then yeah. the tune's done in like a day. Go to the studio, Boy. get that done, put it away for a bit. I yeah. carry on doing my creative work. And then it's like, I'll get to a point where I'm like, cool, I need to film a little something for this, push this out. Yeah, that's what I yeah. yeah, but you're like money, man. Like, he just mm. writes album songs in like a mm. day. He just mm. lets it out, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But you're talking about um going to the studio and stuff. Mm. On the marketing side, like, well, how would you say that will go down? Like, do you have like a budget? Do you have certain people doing? No, like, I feel like obviously, with what I have, mm. I'll say, cool, let me book a six hours, let me book a four hours, just so that I can slot in between what I need to do. Because mm. I'm a one-take man. I'll okay. go in the booth, I know my team. Mm. You get me? I'm not reading bars off the phone. I'm not yeah. sounding unconfident. I practice my style so much so that when I jump on the mic, it's just like, it's, it's just nature, free. bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I do it, I get it done. That's why I feel like when I'm writing, I want to make sure that I'm done so I can do another thing. So then when I do book the studio session, it's like, it's useful time. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Everything that I needed to get done is done. It's calm, bro. Mm. But since you do everything in one take, what would you put first? Like the lyrics, the like the beat, or like the concept of what you actually want to write down or how you want it to be executed? I'll put the lyrics first. Mm. The reason why is because obviously my beat choices, I feel like naturally I flow in them mm. easily. So it's like, if I don't find a beat to match my flow, I'm not going to go with that beat. I'll, okay. I'll keep on finding, like, you know, like different producers will send me beats. Yeah. I'll be like, cool, this is the one. Let, now, let me try my lyrics on there, see if it works. Yeah. I'll go from there. 100%, yeah, man. Mm. But yeah, this is kind of argued a lot, especially on my platform as well. So um, would you rather have producer beats, like fresh beats from the producer, or online beats like YouTube, Beat Stars? Except you know, it's better to have it from the producer, realistically. Mm. But um, I've gone YouTube, I've gone SoundCloud, because there's so many different producers out there mm. that's got different sounds. Yeah. Like, cool, it's all good, like, Facts. producers sending me their stuff and that, but they just want to stay, see man's work for it, and they just want to jump in, you get me? So they're sending Facts. their beats, you know, but none of them really complement me the way I want it to. Mm. So if I'm finding something, I know specifically what I'm finding in. Ooh, something from me. Old school nineties type beat. That's what I want to hear. That's what I'm getting. But when producers send me stuff, it's like, oh yeah, you got some. I don't know some drill yeah. type thing. Something. Yeah, you got to cipher it I'm down. Scrolling in it. through it, I'm like, nah, my brother, this ain't it. Yeah, you get me. But yeah. when I find what I find, I'm I mostly find it on YouTube. Mum will pay for the beat, make sure that I have got all the rights and everything, mm. and then take it from there. That's calm, bro. That's calm, bro. So how do you handle writers' block or creative challenges? I feel like I don't get writer's block as much as before. Mm-hmm. Obviously, when I first started out, like, doing the recording thing, I was doing drill. <laughs> ah, cause drill. That was yeah. an error, though. Listen, listen, it was an error, innit? But I feel like it's so washed out now. Yeah. yeah? Don't take offence to young youths that's trying to do <laughs> your thing, innit? But 
Realistically, fam, when you get older, fam, you don't respect it no more, brother. You right. don't respect it because there's so much more that a man could be talking about. Yeah. Or you want to talk about four door rides and drilling on a man? Yeah. What? He does. Because man want to hear real shit. Like, I want to be in my car. I want to be like, okay, listen, man, been through that. Man can relate. Let me search up this brother's music. If I hear about you killing someone and doing all of this, you it's think I really want to be? Yeah, you know, I get that. called by the boy and be like, what, what are you listening to? Straight away, you're incriminating me, you, buddy. No. Do you know what I mean? Nah, I feel your pain. Mm. I feel your pain. <laughs> but what's your favourite environment to create music in other than the studio? But like, do you prefer the studio, a specific location, mm. or anywhere that kind of inspires you? My car. The car. That's where I find peace. Okay. Yeah. I ain't got no missus bothering me. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't got no screaming guy in on. Right. I'm in my own zone and I can focus, I can concentrate, I yeah. can be me. You know what I mean? Because nobody's around me. I don't feel no type of pressure. Mm. I don't, I can't, like, say I'm around people, like yeah. I'm in my living room and like, I can't read through my bars and try to spit it out because I'm thinking, oh, he's going to come in and interrupt my shit. Mm. You get me? I can actually be myself. And, okay. you know, it's just authentic. Well, it's you know calm, what I mean? Man. It's calm, yeah, bro. Man. But yeah, in your car, do you have like subwoofers or just like normal speakers or? Just normal speakers, oh, bro. Just calm, normal bro. speakers. Like it will just, it will do its thing, in it. You know yeah, what I mean? No. You got to make do with what you got in this life. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Yeah. All right, cool. We're going to go on to that lyrics and theme. So mm. kind of dive into more of your, you know, style and mm. stuff like that. So your lyrics often touch on specific uh, specific themes like um personal struggles, you know, lavish living, mm. a kind of real life as well, like what mm. you've what you've gone through in the past, innit? Mm. So kind of yeah, can you talk about that? What really what really le- 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 led up to those things? So obviously like my brain's spazzing. It's so, calm, sorry, bro. You all get that. Bro. <laughs> you know what it is, fam, like from when man grew up, fam, man grew up in the struggle, bro. Mm. It weren't easy at all. Yeah. Mm. So, so Man had to make do with what man had. Man had to hustle a bit, you know. Obviously, the boy don't fuck up. <laughs> but man had to do what man had to do, innit? Yeah. So it's like, when I'm talking about in music now, I'm kind of showing the audience who I am as a person. Mm. I'm showing them, listen, when you're listening to my music, this is what you're going to get. You're not going to get nothing else or nothing less. Mm-hmm. You're getting me for who I am. Yeah. So I feel like the struggle made me, you know, obviously man got to a point where, yeah, so yeah, man got to a place where it's like, cool, man's got bread now, man can rap about certain things and, you know, I can relate to other people that probably haven't lived in the struggle, mm-hmm. but they can understand what man's talking about when I'm talking about nice clothes, nice cars and that. Thanks. And then, you know, just the real life shit, anyone can relate to, you Thanks. know, day to day, what we go through. Yeah, it's you know? so easy, bro. Trust me. 100%. Mm. 100%. Is there any particular song or verse that's genuinely meaningful to you. Why? There's a lot, bro. There's yeah. a lot. And the reason why there's a lot is because it's like, it's not a repetition thing, but it's like I'm drilling it into my audience's head. Listen, this is who I am. Mm. So it's like, when I talk about the struggle, you're going to hear that in my tunes. Like you're not going to hear it the same way each time, but you're going to hear it. So you can tell, like, listen, when you're listening to a feedback song, you can yeah. tell who he is, you can tell his background, you know what's, what's going on. Exactly. You know what I mean? When you listen to Willis, you yeah. can tell what's going on. Right. You know what I mean? The proof is in the pudding. On, so, bro. at the end of the day, yeah, man, that's just, that's just what I am, bro. Like, obviously, Diary of a Hustler, that's one of my new tunes that I'm going to release. Okay. I'm going to do like a whole project for that documentary, everything. Okay. And that's going to be like the whole, like basically what we're talking about now, like me yeah. coming up, you know, like the whole growth yeah, yeah, type of yeah. thing. So, that's what that is. Come on, but come on. I feel like that, there's a few bars in there that resonate with me. I can't even tell you off the top of my head because I've got so many tunes. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, in my head, you know what I mean, bro? It's, it's a crazy yeah. place. Bro. Yeah, come on, bro. It's good, man. That's good, man. Yeah. But yeah, like, you've been rapping for a long time, but... Mm. Yeah, like, but when I went on your page, you don't have a lot of stuff out. Mm. It's like, mm. it's a lot of it archived mm. or... Mm. You know what it is, yeah? Cool. All of my old drill stuff, yeah. In the archive or in the bin. So like you changed. Fuck, I changed. Changed, okay. I changed. I don't want that attached to my name. Oh, cool. I don't want to be walking down the road and niggas are trying to test my gang stuff. <laughs> How you mean, <laughs> bro? You see, you see, you see, you see what I mean, though, yeah? <laughs> yeah. You see? Real bad, man, yeah? Yeah, yeah They don't yeah. need to flex on net and chat shit on yeah. the net. And then somebody's going to play them out and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be long because you know what's going to happen, bro. Yes. You get me? Yes. If I stay true to myself, I stay humble. Listen, what you see is what you get. Yes. Yeah. What I say in my tunes, 
in a real life, bro. Mm. So if you try to come step to me, you're going to see what I've done. But at the end of the day, I don't say that in my dream. Okay. I talk about different shit. Yeah. So it's like, me having all the drill stuff on my page, bro, it was just bad attention. Mm. You're getting attention that I don't need, attention that's going to draw me up. Do you know what I mean? So when man got to the stage where I'm like, cool, let me just rap about, you know, my struggles and things. It's like, cool, people will see them. They're from North, East, West, whatever fucking beef you have. Mm. You can hear my tunes and straight away it brings the people together because we're all a part of the struggle. Like, you know. You're trying to tell me that the cost of living don't affect you too? Oh, come Fuck on, off. Man. You get me? It all affects us, man. Man, hear right. that in my music. Yeah. You're like, yeah, man, let me hear this brother right, right now. Mm. You get me? Because I've got respect for it. So, yeah, man, like, even in my catalogue, bro, I've got like over 120 tunes just there. Wait. Do you know what I mean? And that's real rap songs. Right. So it's like bit by bit on my Instagram now, I'm releasing it bit by bit, bit yeah. by bit. So it's like you can see the catalog slowly, you yeah. can see what man's working with, you That's... can see the consistency. Yeah, you know what I mean? No, I hear yeah. you, bro. I hear you, bro. What's like your favorite tune out of all the tunes you have so far? Ah, that's me for that. real style. Ah, the recent yeah? one, yeah. Go stream that, like it up, do yeah. the thing, yeah. Oh. That one there. A lot of people have said, bro, you know what? You're using an old school beat. Yeah. Yeah? With a UK flow. You know what I mean? Just it's mad. No, but you know what it was? Mm. That's never been new, though. Because mm. even back in, like, 2010s, 2012, mm. guys have been, especially in South, and guys what I'm like trying Blade to Brown. You this know is what, what I mean, Blade Brown, Potter. You've got to put respect on their name because Facts. they've done their thing. But it pisses me off so much so to the point that why is it not still here? Bro. Why is it not still here, bro? Because that era of music for me resonated with me so heavy mm. that it's like, man's listening to these tunes when I'm in my car and I'm like, rah, man. Even Young Spray. I big up Young yeah, Spray. Young Spray man. as well, bro. Yeah. Listen, yeah. robbery time. It's a robbing his shit. I know. If you've been in that situation, you can yeah. relate to it. Yeah, That's yeah, why right. I put respect on Young Spray, yeah. on Potter, on all of these men that use the old school. Yeah, Young Tech fan as well, man. He's just been I about for time. I myself, Young Spray. I fam. Because you enough tunes that man's heard from Facts. artists and it's like, I don't really hear nobody man's age mm. that's doing it. Yeah, so it for was. me to try and bring that back yeah. whilst Drill and all of these other things, the wave things taking over right now, mm. whilst that's taking over, I want to make my own doorway and say, you know what? Whoever's fucking with my thing, you're fucking with it. If you're not, you get lost. You know what I mean? Facts, bro. Mm. Facts, bro. That's good, man. But how do you balance storytelling with keeping your music, like, catchy and engaging? It's just my wordplay. Mm. So, see me. Mum will say certain words that you've never heard on a tune before, but yeah. when I when I flow it out, you're like, rah. Especially when you, like, amplify certain yeah. words. Yeah. Similar to Kendrick Lamar, yeah. but in your own style, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, I like that about you, still. That's what I mean, fam. Like, yeah. yeah, man, love for that, man. But, yeah, because, like, man just takes it as it comes, innit? Like, obviously, when I'm using my wordplay... It's... So how do you feel your music has evolved since you first started? Dramatically, bro. Yeah. The reason why I say that is because, obviously, I had a young boy mentality. Mm. When I first come into the scene, now it's like, Obviously, man's getting influenced by all of these dual rappers and that, yeah, yeah, seeing what's yeah. going on. So I'm like, my lyrical content was far from where it is now. Mm. You get me? Because I'm kind of chatting the same thing that every man's chatting. And it's like, yeah. only a few man is going to blow. You get me? So it's like, from there, when I saw that, I had a little hiatus from music. Mm. And I was like, yeah, fuck it, man. I need to go, go away and work on myself as an individual. Looked into myself a lot deeper. And it's like, now, when I write lyrical content, bro, I'm I'm stemming from what I know. You get me? Facts. I'm not seeing everything Facts. else. Like, yeah, the road life and that. Obviously, man, know that. But what's what's me rapping about it going to do? You get me? I'm not going to reach the people that's in the mansions, bro. It's true. You get me? But true. if man rap about certain things that's going to go like, people are going to say, well, you know what? I can actually relate to that, brother. Mm. So now it's like I've got a whole new fan base. And, I, and it's like... My lyrical content, because of that, it's expanding. It's forced me to, you know, do different things, talk about different things, but at the same time, still saying real to myself. That's good, bro, man. It reminds me of Rick Ross, you know mm, what I'm saying? Mm. In his early stages, like when he was doing Hustling mm. and Poor Miami 1, 2. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, bro, like he was talking all, like his lifestyle, how yeah. it came up. Yeah. But nowadays, he's always talking about like riches mm, and luxury mm, mm. and that 
he definitely relates to people that, you know what I'm saying? Like companies, mm. just rich people in general, bro. So yeah, bro. Yeah, definitely. They're going on a good route still. Mm. Uh, what impact do you hope to have from your music to the listeners? Oh, I just hope that it reaches the right ears, you know? Mm. It guides people. Because mm. I'm not misleading the people. I'm not misleading the youth, you know? Yeah, yeah. Man's not telling you, yeah, go pick up a knife or go <laughs> pick up a bag of drugs and go sell that. I'm not telling you to do that, guys. Yeah, no. Man's no. telling you, listen, fam, this is the consequences of my actions. Mm. Do so if you fucking please, but end up like what man ended up like. Yeah, yeah. But it's not like, my life is not like everyone else's, fam. I was just blessed yeah. that I'm not in jail or I'm That's... not dead. You get me? Yeah. But shit that man done could have led man to enough, enough, enough times, you know. Mm. So it's like, listening to my music, you should kind of obtain the knowledge that you need to structure yourself around it. Like, yeah. I'm not, as I said, I'm not misleading the youth. Man. You get me? Yeah. So, yeah, man. And it sounds like you know who you are as well. Yeah. yeah a lot uh -huh. of artists, they just kind of just see and copy, bro. And yeah, this is what we was just talking about off camera, yeah? yeah Listen, <laughs> know who you are as an artist, you know? Come on, Because man. a lot of man in the scene, fam, I'm telling you, it's backwards, bro. There's a lot of man that's, you know, private school. We live in the woods. <laughs> so Hold on. <laughs> Why has Bobby got on a bally now, cuz? What's he telling us? You get me, fam? So it's like, bro, yeah. you know, but there's man them that's really from the hood and then they'll see that they'll test your gangster yeah, because yeah. you don't know who you are as a person. You just said, cool, I want to do the music thing now. Mm. What, you're going to test your gangster and you're done? It's peace, though. You get me? You know what it is? There's an American rapper mm. that was trending back in the day called Slim Jesus. Mm. Have you heard of him before? I've heard of the brother, but I can't put a face to the name right now. Yeah, he was... Oh, it's that brother that... Yeah, he's <laughs> <it's> waving <laughs> guns with yeah, like hella yeah, black yeah, guys yeah, and yeah. that. I think he he had like a show in it, mm. like on the red carpet and that. Mm. That's it. A couple of gangs waiting outside, in it? Yeah. He got tested and he just ran, bro. Just yeah, ran this from is the life. thing. This is the thing, though. Yeah, if saying. you can't hold your own as an artist, mm. as an individual, you have no... You don't know who you are as a person. So much so, it's more as an insecurity. Facts. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. I view it as an insecurity. Like, what, you're trying to be someone else because that person that you're pretending to be is getting more attention <laughs> than what you really are. You know what I mean? So, it's, yeah, it's man, bad. it baffles me, but sorry, bro, that's life. <laughs> come on, bro, come on, bro. Uh, who would be your dream collaboration and why? My dream collaboration? Benny the Butcher. Uh, yeah? He's different. Benny the Butcher. He's the Listen, best, I, Benny, if you're watching this, yeah, bruv, come to the UK, South London. Realist Rizzy is here. Listen to my music. The proof is in the pudding. Come on, Is he it? But, on, yeah, man, like, even, like, his whole collect, like, their music, bro, it's on another level, fam. Facts, and bro. it's like, that's reaching back to the old school mm -hmm. hip hop that man used to fuck with. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I don't really hear artists like that in the States as much. Obviously, there's a lot more underground, mm. but to the point where they are now, <laughs> it's like, rah, fam, man, right, man, go fuck in your team. You oh. get me? Like, even if I was in a tune with them, mm. it's like, even though man's from the UK, they will always diss our I, I'm, I'm, I don't know why, but they'll always diss our accent, fam, but... No, they, <laughs> do you know what it is? I've mm. been seeing a lot of memes that the ladies over there like it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They do. They do still. And this is the thing, fam. A lot of gal in different countries like it. But yeah. All right, go Jamaica and talk in your great British fucking accent and see how much women are on you. Facts. Especially oh, African You're from London. You're from England. Yeah. Yeah, they want peace to <laughs> you, blood. You know what I mean, fam? So, <laughs> you know what I mean, fam? you got to be who you are, fam. Facts, bro. Like, man can't go somewhere else and just... Like, I don't know if any of you lot remember, yeah? Mm. Back in the day. <laughs> when the rap thing weren't really established like that, the old school yeah. man from here yeah. was using the American slang. Do you know what? It wasn't that like Grime Days, though? Nah. Like, I'd say, yeah, Grime Day, in the same type of time as the Grime Days, but yeah. a lot of man was just using this American twang from, and I'm like, bro. Like, even right. when I'm listening to certain old tunes, I'm like, cuz, like, that don't sound right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when we started to establish who we were as a collective, mm. it, the game changed. Course, because now it's like we're reaching to people that we can understand, we can communicate with. Yeah. You get Facts. me? Maybe the Americans, they won't understand us, but yeah. fuck them. This music's for us. Facts. You get me? Yeah, we took a leaf out of your book and, you know, same type of instrumental, same type of music flow. But 
with our accent, bro, it makes everything it's real. Different. You're not going to hear a Spanish brother, yeah, on a drill tune, it's true. talking like the man then from the UK. Nah. You're going to hear You're not going to understand them either. <clears throat> you're really not going to understand them either, still. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, talking about the Spanish thing, even France, Germany, they've mm. been picking up on our draw mm. as well. Mm. So mm. even we influence people, bro. Yeah, you understand but I'd say saying? it's not even originated from us. It's originated from Chicago. Yeah, facts. So it's like facts. we took a leaf out of there, but mm. then other people started taking leaves out of everyone's book because they're seeing what type of publicity it's getting. Mm. So that's where it's like, where does the music really originate from now? Do you know what I mean? I think it's the old and it's the producers, bro. Mm. God, mm. they pick pieces of like old classics like yeah, 70s yeah, yeah. 60s yeah even 80s as well yeah and they flip it and then you know what i'm saying yeah. Cause yeah. you can hear the samples bro hell of samples but that's what i love about music like you could just be standing outside yeah mm. you can hear a bird chirping yeah. and that sounds like something Facts. and a producer if you've got a real creative mind you'll be like cool let me put this on a sample so oh, you know what this sounds similar to an old school tune that i heard back from the 70s let oh, me get that tune let me let me chop it up and let me do my thing with it. Yeah. You put it on a sample type beat, it's, it's going clear. It's you get what I mean? Like there's so much tunes in the inventory of the history, yeah, mm. that if we was to actually go oh. into it, bro, that's why I, I feel like, you know, they don't want me to be a producer, you know, <sighs> because the amount of shit that I hear as an artist and that I want to put in tunes is crazy. Facts, bro. Mm. That's how I was meant mm. to be, though, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What's the most important lesson you've learned from working with other artists? Oh, not everyone is who they say they are, you know. Mm. Not everyone is who they say they are, you know. Mm. Like, a lot of men will be like, yeah, because I've got bread. Man's got my chat line banging. How comes we've been in the studio and I ain't heard your phone ring once? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't heard your phone ring once. Flat yeah. Man. man, it like, cuz, cool. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, you gave your phone to someone else or some shit, yeah. but... Because y- your story ain't really going with what you're rapping about right now. Yeah, so much, that's one thing that I've learned from other artists, fam. Like, it's just stay in your own lane, you get me? Like, yeah, always, I would say always go on a tune with somebody that, that kind of compliments you as an artist. Mm. Yeah, because I hear a lot of good men, like, they're, they're, they're hard. But your bridge, just because you want to put him on a track, he's yeah, sounding like dog shit. Yeah. It's like... Come on, man. And then obviously it comes to the part where there's other artists that want to kind of copy your flow, but they, they pay credit where it's due. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I've heard that before. I want to hear what you're coming with. Who are you as an artist? You know, you know. But yeah, <laughs> man, like me going to studio with other artists has obviously taught me a lot of things. Everybody has a different process. Mm. Like, um, I've done a feature with one, one, one girl. Yeah, she's a sick artist, bro. Ugh. Taylor Pink. I don't know if you heard her, but take no. I cause her thing is mad. I would Jeez. say she's like the female version of me Swear. because on a tune we complement each other so much okay. that we just made a banger. So we're gonna do visuals for that soon and that. Come on, like, trust me, fam. But when I'm seeing her process, she will like to listen to a song that will hype her up mm. before she goes in the booth okay. and then listens to. The, I like that. I'm like, yeah, that's that's smart, you know. So you like we're listening, we're listening, like, I can't even remember what he's listening to. Either SG or Bossman D Low. And I was like, yeah, like this is my shit too. Like right. that gets your energy pumping because yeah. the type of tune that we was doing was like, yeah, like trap type, you know what I mean? Mm. So that kind of built up her energy. So yeah, everybody has their own different structure. Like you see me, I can just go in the booth, do my thing, and I'm good with it. Obviously, I might want to redo a couple things and you know, do tests for, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. for like my energy and that, like my deliverance level. But apart from that, yeah, man, everyone's different, man. That's the one thing that I love. That's calm, bro. That's calm, bro. That's good. So how do you navigate the business side of the industry while staying true to your own part? When you say the business side, can you elaborate? So like a lot of artists, or let, not artists, let me say the artist is signed to a label, yeah. The mm. label wants to push a certain sound. Mm. So right now, Jersey Drill, mm. Jersey Jazz, what you want to call it, is kind of pushing a lot. Mm. People like Nems and mm. all these American artists, like, you know, on the radar radio. Yeah, yeah. You see how there's a lot of new artists jumping mm. on kind of mm. similar beats. Yeah. Yeah, but let's say, like, you're kind of, let's say Latin Drill. Mm. Yeah, I know there's bare Drill, there's bare different Drill sounds now, but 
let's say you have a, a land your type of unique star mm. that you want to push, but mm. your label doesn't mm. want you to put. They want you to push you on a more commercial. Yeah. Like how do you stay true to yourself? It depends who you want to be as an artist. Yeah. Do you, are you in it for the money or are you in it for your growth? Mm. You know, showing people who you who you are as an artist. Mm. With me, I'm showing people who I am as an artist. Mm. So. When I come across, if you're not letting me do my old school type beats, fuck off. You can <laughs> offer me all a hundred bags. I might take the hundred bags. Yeah. <laughs> but I ain't doing none of, none of what you're telling me to do. Mm. Because what? That's just going to diminish who I am. You get me? Yeah. Like man's hurt people like, okay, cool. I'm trying to think of an artist now that's kind of, you know, diluted themselves for a label. But there's a lot. Mm. I can't even count it on one hand. Mm. But. A lot of men will come into the game as a real rap artist. You leave him with auto tune. Yeah, it's all these. Man's talking extra about elements. different shit from what you was talking about before. Your that's, morals have changed. Yeah. But that's. I've been old, I've been... Yeah. So your morals will change, bro. Like, you can come into the game saying, yeah, you know what? I'm strong in who I am. They throw money in your face now. Change. That's all gone out <laughs> the window, blood. You're painting your fingers, calling yourself demure. Oh, you get me? You see them boy there? Yeah? yeah? Because, uh, you know, it's selling. And they're, they, they're so desperate for fame and money yeah. that they're just going to do anything to get there, bro. But you see me, from I ain't changing yeah. nothing for no one, bro. Fuck them. Bro, it's the game. It's game, innit? Yeah. Like, if it works for them, it works for them. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. different, bro. Yeah. Uh, what, has the, what has been the biggest challenge in your career so far? And how did you overcome it? <laughs> Life issues, mm. life issues, fam. Like, you see, when mum was releasing some of mum's good, good, good music, like, I was on, like, um, the Detroit type beats. Oh, you see, yeah. before everyone was doing it, I, yeah, yeah, my nigga yeah. speaks, can vouch, yeah. I um, came to the studio with a Detroit type beat, yeah, and I said, Listen, I'm bringing something new. He called it the trunk, but the trunk bouncing music, because it was different, bro. Yeah. Not one man, not Meek's money, not no one, not. Anyone that has jumped on them type of beats and I was on them. So I was like, cool, I'm going to make my own pathway. Yeah. I jumped on the tunes. I read them mad. Like one of my tunes, You Got Served, that's like a Detroit type beat. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. man, read that smoothly. Everyone's fucking with it. I didn't release it when I dropped it. Like I didn't release it the time that man actually done it. Mm. I released it all two years later. So now it's looking like I'm following a trend. Mm. But man was the original, bro. I'm not trying to gas on my own so fuck, but man was the original, bro. Yeah. So it's like, bro, I didn't do that because of life issues, bro. Like, man was doing my thing. The boy then was there, you know, trying to sweep me up every minute. So it's like, if I release music now, that's just going to hold me back, bro, because man's going to be in the can, yeah, incriminating evidence. Yeah, yeah, but this yeah. is the thing that's rapping about what you live. It has its disadvantages and advantages. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah, man, that did hold me back for a long time. And that's what kind of made me change my style to say, yeah, let me just talk about the realness and what's going on right now. Let me not even talk about all the drug activity and stuff that's going on on the road, fam, because that's just a one-way avenue. Yeah, me? yeah. So everybody's kind of sucking into that image as well. Mm, mm. So it makes sense, bro. Yeah. But how do you stay motivated during tough times? Hey, my motivation can come from... Just listening to one tune, mm. yeah? Mum won't listen to a tune for like a year. I'll put it on, I'll be like, hold on a minute. Is this yeah. the shit man's talking? Why is this not art right now? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like my motivation comes from myself as well. But I'd say I've only really started releasing music proper since my daughter was born. Because I'm like, rah, man's actually brought a life into the world now. Mm. Like, Are you I want to... Like, you know, you know what I mean, bro? Like, I want to show her, like, yeah, fam, like, your dad was doing something constructive with his time for my daughter, fam, you get me? Like, that was mostly important to me. Like, that's what motivates me all the time. Because it's like, without substance and purpose, bro, where nobody is individuals, you get me? So it's like, knowing that I have that behind me, yeah, man, it always pushes me to be better, you know? That's calm right here, man, I hear that, man. Mm. So, can you share a moment where you dialed your path as a rapper and how did you push through? Uh, I saw a goofy blow up. A <laughs> goofy, yeah? Some you on my block, not rapping what he lives. Yeah. I was like, fam, you know what? This game is for the 
for the youth, then that's that's not about it, you mm -hmm. know? Because there's too many stories of people that's not doing what they rap about, yeah. but they're blowing up. So I was like, wow, man, there's no room for the real rap artists, for people that's actually doing what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, trying to... <laughs> but, yeah, man, that kind of demotivated me a bit, but then I'm like, fuck it, man, you know what? If the next man can do it, and someone's taking him in, yeah, you know, there's there's more real than fake out there. So realistically, Come on, man. we must be able to take money in somewhere. Can't you get Same. me? Same. Can't yeah, man, it's, it's not what it used to be, but what can we do, man? We've got to bite our tongue and just yeah, keep carry going, on. Bro. Exactly. Is what it is. But how do you see the role of hip hop in today's social and political climate? I feel like there's more to talk about now. Mm. So with things that's going on behind the scenes, things that we don't even know about, things yeah. that's past our knowledge as normal human beings that's just in this rat race that we're living day to day. Facts. It's like if somebody's to come and show the people what's actually going on behind the scenes and spread knowledge, I feel like that's where hip hop was back in the day. Mm -hmm. Because you get me like there was a lot of things like um let's say for instance Tupac, he was he was like um what, what do you call it, bro? You know, like Malcolm X and, and Martin Luther King and that activists. Yeah. Their mum was activist, you get me? Yeah. So it was like, oh, sorry, my phone's ringing. No, it's a I said, when you call him, when you call calling, man. You get me? Oh, maybe I will call him my phone. Tell her, <laughs> money, no? She want to take it. <laughs> anyway, fam. Yeah, man. Um... Yeah, but what was I saying? Yeah, like an activist. So he's spreading like awareness on things that's actually going on. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, that's what I feel like it will have its place in today because there's so much shit. Like we had all the fucking EDL shit that was going on not yeah, too long ago. Yeah, yeah, if man. man jumps on the tune and talks about shit like that, people can relate to it. Mm. You know what I mean? Apart from making it cringe, like a lot of men will do the same thing and make it cringe, fam, to the point where man don't even want to listen. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. if you implement it so much so where it has to do with lifestyles and differences and people will understand. People on, can man. fathom and people will jump on board. Come on, man. Mm. Come on, man. But yeah, bro. Do you feel a responsibility to address social issues, uh, social issues in your music? <sighs> social issues as in, as in what, bro? Probably like, um, let's say, probably what people actually go through, certain mm. things like government, government status. Yeah. I feel like this is, this is kind of outside your element. Yeah. But, um, let's say lifestyle. Yeah. Like, um, you speak about the trap and yeah. certain things like that. Like, yeah. Since you're similar, do you have a responsibility on what you talk on? Uh, how it affects other people. I feel like, obviously, what I said before, like, me giving misleading information, like, I'm not going to tell you to jump on the trap just because I don't, mm. you know. Well, something that it, might, it might look cool, though. Even it though might look cool, that. but not everything that looks good. Listen, <laughs> what do they say, fam? Sugar look like salt. Salt look like sugar, mm. yeah? So you never know, like, the grass could be greener on the other side, but the trap could have worked out for me, but for the next man, he's doing a 25. You know what I mean? Yeah. So many things can happen in between that it's like, bro, you don't know what's going to happen, bro. So I don't give misleading information. I just told the youth them what man's been through, what man, what man's gone through and, you know, how I structured myself out of that. Mm. I don't say, yeah, you know what, jump in the chat because you make bare money. Yeah, like, exactly. like I'm trying to get bare runners, you know? Man ain't trying to do that, bro. Man's not going to tell somebody that somebody else is picking me, yeah, you know, do this because... You know, at the end of the day, we're all individuals, fam. We've got true. our own path in life, so, Facts. you know, be who you are, fam. Facts. Trust me. Come on, man. Come on, man. What changes would you like to see in the music industry, especially regarding representation and diversity? I'd like to see... I would like to see people stop fucking using auto-tune. <laughs> yeah? Too many please. Ads. Please. Because... I feel like it's just become such a norm that a man can't sing. Yeah. Yeah? But you got that auto tune on now. Not even I feel like everybody doesn't different. know how to use auto tune properly. You know? That's the thing though. But Sound people less... people use it in a way where it's like, cool, you sound like young ads now. You sound That's... like my man now. 
Mon Where's sure. the individuality? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So yeah, man, like that's one thing that I, I would I would say fuck that off in the industry, man. Like like where's all the people that can actually sing, you know? That's like, you know, just do your thing in the booth, man. Don't say, yeah, you know what, I got a I got something that I wanna sing, but let me add the auto tune on there so I don't sound so shit. You know? Fuck it. If you got a croaky voice, just <laughs> accept it. You well, get man. me? Like Fam, people might even take you in even more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you sound different. Yeah. Everyone that sounds the same is not going to get the same representation or, you know, like the same spotlight as another man that's done the same thing. Nice. Just look at like, okay, look at the, the similarities between Jay Huss and what's his name? P.A. Salute. Mm. I feel like they sound the fucking same, but Jay Huss got more publicity. You get me? But whereas, cool, they're both getting the, the publicity and that, but if somebody else is to do the same thing and, and sound like them, they're not gonna get the same the same feedback that they got. Right. So why is it that when you see young young ads and LB doing the eat pussy and auto tune yeah. thing, everyone wanna do the eat pussy and auto tune thing? No. Trending. No. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> ah. Well you heard it here first, man. Be yourself, man. For Trust real. Trust me, fam. Do your thing. Do your thing. Whatever you're confident in. Do that. Stand by. Oh we'll move on to future goals and projects. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So let's start with what can fans expect from you in the coming months or years? More music. Right. More real music. Yeah, more old school hip hop beats mm. that some people are fucking sick of and they can't <laughs> stand me because of it. But the haters keep on hating because I'm telling you, it's fueling me up even more. Come on, man. Um, yeah, man. I've got a project coming up, Diary of a Hustler. I'm yeah. going to do a documentary for that. I'm going to print some T-shirts. It's all about the branding. Okay, yeah? Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to have that out there. You know, all the people that's actually taking money and listening to my music, fucking with it. Cool. You know, expect that. You know, man's going to have a lot of shit coming. We've got, obviously, the feature that I've done with Taylor Pink. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, going to be a it. mad tune. Come yeah. On. Big up my sis, Taylor Pink. Keep on doing your thing. But because yeah. when that one comes, we're flying through the roof. Jeez. So... Once you lot see this podcast, we're going to be like, right, you said it first. Come on, Because man. we're the realest. <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah, man. But yeah, what about like more appearances, you know, shows mm. or family I wanna, ups? You know what? I want to try to do more open mics because mm. I feel like that's obviously a good <clears throat> thing to network. Yes. You know? Yes. And obviously I said previously in one of my other podcasts, your net worth is your network. Facts. So it's like the more people you know, you can shout someone and say, yeah, you know, this is what I'm doing now. They can assist you in that, True. you know. You True. never know who you meet, like what what paths you may cross. And obviously, as a creative, it's like that's something that we need, right. you know. Like every man wants to be, yeah, you know, I'm strong by myself. I can do this on my own. But realistically, fam, where are you gonna go if you don't know a cameraman? Where are you gonna do- go if you don't know a producer or an engineer? You know, you can meet people at these events. So yeah. it's like with me, I'm holding myself back. Like, yeah, cool, I'm on social media, but me actually being in the flesh and people seeing me for who I am, me having a conversation with someone, them kind of like seeing what type of aura I have, who I am as a person, they can they can take off to me more easy, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then, first impression cards. You know what I mean? All the, all the time, so, though, so things can just get the ball rolling from that. That's good, man. Mm. Are there any new genres or sounds you're interested in exploring? Mm. Yeah, there is. Because there's there a is. lot of trendy sounds. You know what, out, yeah? Bro. I wanted to go to the kind of like, you see what Scratch done on, um, um, what is it, 80s? 80s mix, yeah. Yeah? You see when he's using the old school R&B, R&B tunes? Mm. I want to do that as well. Okay. I've done one tune with the Ashanti mix, yeah? yeah? That baby, baby, baby. I've done that with yeah. older girl, yeah? That's one of my tunes. Listen yeah. to that, yeah? Listen. When you hear the lyrics and the fucking detail that man says on that tune, it's so through the roof. It's like, raw. I've heard it and I'm like, raw. I need to do more of this. Mm. But every time I try to do more of this, it's like, I've got other shit to talk about. So that's something that I want to reach into a lot more. Like the R&B sample type beats. You know, just something of the old school. As I said, that's what I'm trying to bring back. So that's what I need to kind of dive into a bit more. It's calm, bro. Mm. It's calm. So where do you see yourself in five years, both as an artist and personally? As an artist, I'd say, you know, wherever my music takes me, it takes me in it. Mm. Like, and so in terms of like where I see myself in five years, mm. it's like, 
wherever my music wants to take me and take me in it. Like I'm not forcing nothing. Obviously, I'm gonna do my promotions and that, whatever it does, it does. But at the end of the day, it's for my own therapy, bro. Like music for me has been part. Of, it's like smoking ganja. You yeah. get me? It's <laughs> like it will ease man's stress come on. to the point where it's like, yeah, I feel good now. But the content that I come with, it needs to be released. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not just doing it, yeah, let me just write this tune for blow. Mm. I'm doing it, yeah, let me write this tune because it's good for me and my mental health. And at the same time, we can, you know, help the audience and they can take me in. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%, 100%. That's cool, man, that's cool. So how do you connect with your fans, both online and in person? Um, I just keep on giving them free stars, you know? Mm. You know, stimulating them. Yeah, it's keeping them busy. You know, I've got a next freestyle here. Yeah. You know, take me in. They'll take it in. And at the same time, because it's going on the catalogue now, mm-hmm. like, say, for instance, I post it on TikTok, people will be like, raw, like, my man's coming with some some good bars and that, like, let me see what else he's got. They go into the catalogue now. Boom. Mm-hmm. They subscribe their fan now. Because they're taking in everything that man's got. So it's like, that's how I keep on, you know, getting in touch with the fans and the audience and that. Like, yeah, man, just reaching out, really, you know. But what's the most memorable interaction you've had with a fan? Right. Somebody commented on my thing from Bulgaria, fam. Is it? I see you going international. What are you saying, fam? Like, man, going all Bulgaria and that now, yeah? It's like, cool. the icon there is like, yeah, congratulations from Bulgaria. I'm like, raw. I didn't even know my music was going all the way over there, fam. When you say you're listening to Rillis from South London, from Bulgaria, yeah? <laughs> yeah well, you know, the man. young boy that grew up in Lambeth, man's getting fans in Bulgaria. And I yeah, pick yourselves man. up, man. All the time, like, trust me. Come on, but man. yeah, man, that was good still. Um, couple other little ones here and there, like, you know, got some little Essex boys and that, you know, oh, the ones yeah, in the hood yeah. rips and that, you know. <laughs> Say, yeah, Willis, man, this is the shit. Yeah, like, yeah, man, you know, bump my shit. Them, man, there, man. Yeah, man, trust no, me, man. Saying. Yeah. You love the culture still. Mm. Uh, what do you want your legacy and your rap game to be? So how do you want to leave a print behind? I just want to be remembered as a real artist, you know. So you I stuck Willis. to my word. Everything I said, I meant it. Yeah. You know, I never changed my style for anyone to see anybody's preferences. I remained myself and I stayed that way the whole way through. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be, as I said, one of them people that just change because of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no matter how much money comes, it will never change who I am from because mine grew without money, bro. Yeah. So it's like, even that, I still got the same mentality from when I was brought and I had holes in my shoes, bro. You get me? I still remain the same. So... No amount of money will change me or change my music or not. Come on. Brennis. Come on. So we're going to do some fun, light-hearted questions to end it off, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Oh, uh, what would it be? What would it be? See me, black. <laughs> man, you can't ask a man from South London these questions, black. Invisibility, yeah? Oh, I'm going in the bank. Yeah, I'm picking everything. <laughs> and I'm gone. Yeah? yeah, get me the invisible cloak as well, so I can put it over the money. And you know, Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gone. You get me? That's one superpower that man would have still, or I could fly. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, at least yeah. I can trust myself rather than a fucking pilot. You know? Man, you know, I wouldn't mind that. But yeah, man, give me the money now. <laughs> give me the money now. <laughs> classic, classic. Trust me. Uh, what's on your playlist right now that people might be surprised to know you're into? Red fires. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, man. Nice. Come on. See how the man them can relate. <laughs> Aye, listen. Yeah, man. Listen, the man them can relate, blood. A little Brent fires on a late night drive, fam. Get the gal them. Where top? That's, yeah? That's, that's, well, that's, even for me, fam, it's like, bro. You know, there's a tune that, man. Oh, I don't even know, but he's... And Thames. Thames as well, you know. Yeah, Thames as well, you know. It, it gets my soul in the right place. I feel like once I light up a gun just flip and I'm driving and I listen to that Thames, I'm like, yeah, I'm easy right now. Come on. Man. You know, like, yeah, man, I like them. Yeah, that's... Oh, what else is on my bed? I think that's about it. That's out like of the ordinary thing, you know. That's calm, yeah. man. That's good, yeah. man. That's good, man. Uh, if you weren't rapping, what would you be doing? What would I be doing yeah. if I weren't rapping? Boy, what would I be fucking doing? Um... I'll probably be doing a bag of fuckery if I'm being honest with you. Because as I said, like, my music is my therapy. 
Yeah. You know, so without that, I would just be all over the place, bro. I wouldn't have no no structure realistically because it's like now I know what I'm working for. I know what I'm going towards. I have a goal that I want to reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like without that, there would be no rhythm. Mm. Yeah. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Boy, I think you were done, bro. We're done. Yeah, still, the questions are done. Yeah, like man. I say, it's been your boy realist, man. If you want to shout anything out, any extra projects, like you yeah. said, with um the pink girl as well. Yeah. So yes. obviously, yeah, me, tank, me and me and Taylor Pink got something coming, you know. Wait on that. That's gonna be a mad thing. Yeah. Bucking, yeah. I've got Diary of a Hustler coming soon. Wait on that. That's gonna be a mad thing. Also, I've recently decided that I'm gonna start doing spoken word. Mm. Yeah. If you really listen to my music and you can hear my lyrical content, yeah, a lot of people won't take it in when it's on a beat. But when it's without and it's a cappella, you can take my shit in. So spoken word is something that I'm going to reach into. I'm going to start doing shows. I'm going to start doing freestyle videos of me doing spoken word so people can actually grasp what I'm saying. Yeah? And that's how you know who's a real lyricist and who isn't. Ask your favourite fucking rapper to be a spoken word artist and see if they'll, they'll shit themselves. Like, you understand? So that's something that I want to do, man. And I'm going to do that. So yeah, man, it's your boy Rillis. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Like up my shit on the Instagram, Rizzy. Yeah, YouTube, Rillis Rizzy Official. You know, E for Real Style out now on all digital platforms, man. Go run it up. Trust me. It's yeah, been yeah, a pleasure, yes. though, man. I appreciate it, bro. That's how you hit first, man. Go check them out. I have a lot of content out, especially on this Instagram and YouTube page. So check out our Nation podcast as well. As you can see, we've got a new logo. Content coming out very soon. And yeah, man, appreciate you guys. It's been your boy CJ. What's that agent behind the camera? Yo. Peace, man. Peace. Big up, big up.